All right, we're going to look at now pendulum motion and how that re relates to vibrational motion. So let's talk about a pendulum and how it works. First off, you have your, uh, your string going down and you have your weight. Now, at the point at the bottom of the pendulum, tension and gravity are going to be at a, at a, certain, uh, a certain amount, but we know they're going to be exactly um, on the same plane. As the pendulum moves, you can see gravity will stay constant because it goes straight down, but tension will change. And this will continue throughout the movement. Now what you want to notice is, and this it says here in the in the diagram, the ten, the magnitude varies over the course of the cycle. Here it's going to be the greatest, and as it moves up, tension force is going to decrease. And as this tension force decreases, that's where the pendulum will slow down and then speed up as it goes down. And that's what we expect to see in a pendulum. So here's your free body diagram, and here's what it looks like. Um, you got gravity. Now, at any point, we can take gravity and break it apart into its uh, into its x and y components, and you can see gravity can have an x. Now, it's going to be equal to tension. When we talk about at any point in the swing, well, the x component, um, I'm sorry, the y component will be a force of gravity that is tangent. Okay, and, and this is what we expect to see, and this is the force that's going to cause the movement one way or the other. Now, what this looks like on a sine curve. Remember our sine curve from before, we have a center point, which is right about here. The center point we see on the sine curve, that's going to be our, uh, our equilibrium position, or rest position. So that's going to be the same as the zero position. Now, as it moves up into the positive, that's a rightward movement of our pendulum. And then once it gets up to there, it starts to move left, which gives it this slope, which is the negative slope. And it gets down to here, and then once it gets to here, it starts to come back this way. And that's the positive portion. So this position, when we talk about the sine curve, negative is to the left, positive is to the right. But we can see positive, positive, positive. So let's look. Let's start right here. Positive, positive, and then it goes into the negative. Then it goes to the positive, then it goes to the negative. So now it's going to the right. Now it's going to the left, etc. So this shows us the motion of the pendulum. Um, one thing you'll see is how the amplitude changes due to damping. And we expect to see that in pendulum motion also. Um, velocity curve, and you can see the velocity of our of our object going in the negative direction, going in the positive direction. Okay, and then the uh, this will tell us the speed, and you can see the speed also with our amplitude changes. If we compare the amplitude, it'll be going faster here than it will be here because of damping. So let's look at velocity and position side by side for the movement of this pendulum, and you can see where A is. At A, right here, no velocity. And it's all the way in the uh, in the positive point. Now, as it starts to work its way down, it becomes negative. And as it moves negative, the speed increases negative until it gets to D. At D, the speed is at its highest point, the negative. As it starts to go back up, it'll slow back down to zero. And then as it comes back down, it will increase back up to here in the positive. So when we look at the points, right? The D point is on the uh, is on the rest position. That's also where it's going the fastest. So in a pendulum, at the rest position is where we're going the fastest. Now, what does this mean for energy? As we go this way, we go faster, which means kinetic energy increases. As we go up, we slow down, which means kinetic energy decreases. As we go back down again. It speed up, kinetic energy increases, and as we go back up, we slow down, kinetic energy decreases. So when we look at kinetic energy in the pendulum, going down increases, going up decreases our kinetic energy. And then the opposite is true for potential. As we go up, potential energy increases, and as we go down, potential energy decreases. So our energy converts from kinetic to potential in both of those instances. Now, using our, using our bar graphs, so position D at the bottom, all kinetic energy, no potential. As we start to go up, so as we're down here, that's D. As we start to go up, what we see is an increase in potential, which slows down the, uh, the object, the, the plumb bob. And as we go farther up, more potential, less kinetic, until we get to the very point where we come back down, when we have all, all potential and no kinetic. And then it does back this way, and we see the same thing. So E would be here, this would be F, this would be G. Again, the kinetic energy slows down as we get to the top until it becomes all potential. But total mechanical energy stays constant if there's no damping. 
Now, what is what is a period of a pendulum? So if we have a pendulum um, and we want to control the time frame to go from here to here to back again, right? That's going to be our that's going to be our motion. Um, there's only one thing that controls it: the length of the string. So when we look at this equation, if we want to find the time period in seconds, we take two pi times the square root, and the square root is the length of our chord divided by g and where we're at. So if we're on Earth, obviously 9.8, but in other places, g would be different. But then the length will tell us, or will control the uh, period, because g is constant in wherever we're at on Earth. So the only way to control uh, the, the, the time period is to control the length of our pendulum. No other way. So let's look at, let's look at an example problem here. we got some trapeze performers at a circus. And um, they're swinging from ropes attached to a large ele ele elevated platform. So we have the motion of a pendulum with our uh, with our swinging, right? It's going to go back and forth. Suppose that the performers can be treated as a simple pendulum with a length of 16 meters. Determine the period for one complete back and forth cycle. So time is equal to 2 pi square root of L over G. We're going to assume Earth. So we're going to stay with 2 pi square root. Our length is 16 meters. And our g is 9 meters per second squared. Meters cancel. We take the square root to get rid of our seconds. And then we do all this math. And what we get in the end is t is equal to 8.03 seconds. Now you notice this is irregardless of the mass of the performer. Every performer will act the same way as long as they're using this length of rope. And we're still in the same place on Earth, which we are. So remember, g is 9.8, and the length of our rope determines the period. Um, here's another example. Analytical wishes to make a single pendulum. It serves the timing device. So she wants to make sure that time period is one second, so that the pendulum moves. Right, right here, it moves. Boom, 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 and the time period of one second. So again, we want to know what length. We're going to keep this thing on Earth, so g is going to be 9.8. Our time is one second. 2 pi square root of L over 9.8. Now, when we want to solve this, we want to think about things to get rid of the uh, get rid of the radical would be one way to do it. And that's the way I'm going to do it, um, is I'm going to square everything. So I'm going to square this, I'm going to square this, and I'm going to square all this. So what I get is, and I'll bring that up to here, 1 second squared is equal to 4 pi squared is equal times L over G. G is 9.8, so I'll just say 9.8. And now I can do the algebra to solve for L. L turns out to be 0 0.248 meters. So I know if my pendulum is 2.248 meters long, it'll have a time period of one second.